Hi, I'm Sherman with Highland Park, and I have something really cool to show you. And that is, for years, many of you have been saying, you know, you guys need to make a saw that is bigger than the 18, smaller than the 24, because the 24's got a bigger, bigger tank, so it takes up more space. The 18's a great saw, it's our most popular selling saw. However, we listened and we made the 20 inch saw. This is the 20 inch, uh, new 20 inch Highland Park saw. We have these, they just came in stock and they're really cool. And I'll tell you a little bit about them. Why don't you bring the camera on over here and I'll show you. Well, one of the things we've done with this saw, which is what we've also done with a lot of the other saws, the bigger saws, is you'll notice that this has thick steel in it. This is four millimeter plate steel. Uh, we TIG and MIG weld it together. So it's extremely uh, well built. Um, uh, the tank like this is going to outlive you and all of me, my kids. This is like a legacy type of product that you can pass down. Um, just like a lot of the older Highland Parks made in the 40s and 50s and 60s are still running, this is designed with the same intensity and fanaticism of heavy duty. In fact, where steel is actually thicker than the originals. And we're uh, using a little bit better quality steel than were used in the earlier ones as well. Um, so the tank. It was really one of the first things to look at in a saw. I'm going to speak a little bit of this video of some of the things you need to pay attention to. I'll talk about the 20 inch saw, of course, but I want you, if you're looking, maybe even if you're looking at buying a used saw, what are the things to be paying attention to? And one of the first things that's most important is the strength and the rigidity of the tank itself. Um, uh, because when you're cutting a rock, and if you just imagine there's a, this is an automatic feed, so when this rock is being pushed through the blade, and I, this is your cross feed, which I'll talk about in a minute, when this rock is going in, the blade is cutting it, there's a huge amount of force um, that is generated, and the tendency is for the rock to want to climb the blade. So if any of you have ever used a table saw and you push a board through too fast, and that board try to climb up the blade if you go too fast, a slab saw is going to operate the same way. More forced, if I'm saying I'm cutting Arizona wood, which is very tough material, Arizona petrified wood, um, that rock is going to want to climb that blade. So part of what we pay attention to is the rigidity of the saw tank, because the t tendency, and if you put your video where you can, I can, you can see the hands. Um, when I'm pushing the rock, if my tank is flexible and thin sheet metal, this will start, you'll start having a twisting action because literally that rock's being pushed, it's trying to climb the blade. And now when the saw is, the tank itself is twisting and you'll see this, it's a very common problem you'll see on some of like, uh, some of the Covington saws will do this. They'll use a fairly thin sheet metal and they'll roll the lip of that, but the rigidity of the tank is such that then instead of keeping a parallel cut, you're now starting to dish your blade because literally you're loading up the rock in that um, and you're now getting blade marks because the tank is actually not rigid enough. What we do to really uh, eliminate those problems is first very thick steel. If you move around here, we'll go underneath the saw. And if you look underneath the saw here, can you get these brackets? So we cross put in additional steel underneath the tank, uh, which is designed to further stiffen the tank so it eliminates a lot of the twisting. Also right underneath here, there's steel that's welded up from the bottom of the tank to the bottom of the arbor itself. So, you know, your arbor is taking a lot of that force. So by making the tank extremely rigid, we eliminate the issue of the twisting action, which causes dishing of your blade and also causes blade mark. One of the Critical components also on a saw is the way that the arbor is designed. We talked about the tank and how important the tank is. Well, the arbor is taking a lot of the abuse. It's holding the blade that's cutting the rock. And in our saws, we only use cast iron pillow block bearings. So this whole, it's called a pillow block bearing. The whole housing is made out of cast iron. The bearing inserts in the middle has a grease cert, so it's serviceable bearing. This costs more money to use. But in our view, this is the right solution. If I'm going to build a, 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 a bracket car, a race car, I'm not going to cheap out and use some crappy components. Same thing when you build a slab saw. This is a style of bearing that our competitors use on a lot of their saws. It's a little stamped metal bearing. It's not a bad bearing. It's fine for using on the front, which is a low speed shaft. If you look at this shaft here, it's fine for that. This shaft's losing slow. It doesn't have much force, but on an arbor, it's crazy. Um, so, you know, a lot of the lower tones use this particular style bearing. Um, we're not fans on it. Uh, when we did the high tone series that saw over there, fortunately I can't show you in the moment, but I can show you a little bit that underneath this bearing, 
cover are two bearings and you'll see there's a set screw there and there's a set screw there. These set screws both on the front and the back hold the bearing in place and the bearings here thread into a, a half inch thick plate of steel. So you don't have to reach underneath and put a lock and a washer, or flat washer. Literally you can just tighten right down into the arbor plate and these set screws here allow you to precisely align the saw. So your saw when it comes from Highland Park is perfectly aligned. So you can immediately start cutting with them and produce great results. You'll have to break your blade and the blade takes a little bit of time to break in depending on which blade it is, but the saw itself is ready to go. And part of that ability for us to do that is using high quality bearings that are precisely aligned in the saw ready to go. So those things are not visible to the eye, but if you cut like us, we cut production, we run a factory in our Philippine operation, we cut between one and two uh, tons of rock a week. And performance is really everything. We don't have time to mess around. We don't have time for saws to be breaking down. We've improved a lot of the functionalities like here, the wear part. This is a replaceable insert, which is double the amount of thread that the original Highland Parks had. As a classic problem with any saws, you're gonna wear the feed nut out. Ours is a simple six screw replacement part. I think it's like $40, fairly cheap. Um, that allows you to immediately service the saw simply and be able to be up and running without a lot of delay. So, you know, our attention has really been around how do we make a saw that's extremely rugged, extremely durable, something that we can be proud of because we live cutting every day. If you move your camera right around here, we sell tons and tons of rock. I, I, I always tell people I'd much rather sell them rough rock than to sell you a saw. Uh, because really it is all about cutting. It's about the beauty of the creations you're creating. Whether you buy a used saw, whether you buy a new saw, it doesn't matter so much to me. Is it, what matters for me is that you're having fun and you're being successful doing what you love to do. Now one of the classic things I heard, which I thought was actually fairly funny but revealing, is uh, I had a customer at the well, it's the last Tucson show. He says, well, I went and I talked to the guys of one of the other saw manufacturers and I say, well, the way you can get a perfect cut is you cut the slowest speed possible. Now they're probably right because if the tank is really flexible, then you got to really baby their rock through there. So you're not getting those distortion problems happening. However, that also means you're taking three times the speed time to cut the rock. And we're not all going to live forever, right? You only have so much time. Um, and if you're cutting for money, you're also going half a third of the production output and you're tripling the energy cost to run that saw. If you live in Arizona, California, places where electricity is exp extremely expensive, that actually matters, if you're, especially if you're cutting for money. So our philosophy is cut as fast as you can. Um, obviously, if I'm going to cut Arizona petrified wood in this, I'm going to slow this saw down. But I'm cutting common agates and jaspers. I'm going to push it as hard as I can. This saw is designed with three speeds. Um, so if you look across the front, this is our main feed drive shaft here. And you'll see the three-step pulleys. Super easy to change your speed, to change your speed. All I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up on this, this little idler pulley, change to a different speed. This is my slowest speed up here. If I want to go to the next fastest speed, I put it there and I push the pulley down. Doesn't have to be super tight, just has to be a little bit rigid. I mean, I would do it a little bit more than that um, because it's not got a whole lot of force. We've got a huge gear ratio advantage here. So changing the speed on this is super quick uh, to do. And I want to point out one other thing that pay attention to when you're looking at newer new use saws. All the pulleys that we use are cast iron pulleys. Highland Parks over the years were all cast iron until about the 70s they started to cheap out um, the Highland Park manufacturing. They really went down in quality in the, in the 70s, later 70s. Um, we really stuck to really that 1950s and 60s cast iron uh, bearings. Any of the aluminum bearings are made out of, uh, machined out of aluminum billet. They're very, very rugged. This is not that crappy die cast stuff. So your componentry really wears well. This step pulley will last 30, 40, 50 years. It's not gonna wear out. Uh, because it's made out of cast iron, it's all powder coated as well. Um, so first thing really is the tank. Really is your tank rigid on your saw? Whether it's a new saw or used saw, what's the rigidity of the thing? The second thing that really matters in the saw, and the 20s are a great example, is the carriage. So our construction on all the Highland Park uh, professional level saws, which is the Model 12 Agate Specimen Saw, 
the 16, 18, 20, and 24, and 36, all use a roller bearing carriage. So you'll see there's uh, bearings here. There's actually a total of eight bearings on the top. So when the carriage moves on the rail, it's actually riding on bearings. There's also then four more bearings underneath that are sandwiching the carriage to the rail. So you maintain extremely tight tolerances as you're cutting and no movement. Movement in a carriage means blade marks. It means then more grinding to get the slab smooth, to get the scratches out so you can actually create whether it's a pendants or earrings or other types of things. Movement is also really important. So you'll notice on this carriage here, you'll bring the uh, camera around, we have two crossfeed rails. So when I crossfeed this uh, carriage, it's riding on two rails. Now, yes, that's more complex to machine because we have to hold tolerances of two parallel shafts here. That's why you'll see other saws that only use one rail because it's easy to put a single hole through. Having two holes perfectly parallel, fairly difficult. Um, we have a videos up on our, uh, our channel where you can look and see how we machine these. Um, so we use two rails and that affords this to be extremely rigid. So if you grab and if you're looking at a use saw, one of the first things to do is go grab the carriage. If you feel clunk, 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 clunk. If you grab this and you feel clunk, 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 any kind of movement, that means the saw is wearing out. And why we use the roller bearing design is in a gritty environment, stone dust is extremely abrasive. So if you see a saw that runs on a pipe, you know, like you, these rails here are basically round pipes and you've got holes through the carriage, that's gonna loosen up over time. It's become sloppy. That's a cl cl classic design on the Barranca saws is they, because they run on tubes over a gritty environment, they get looser and looser and looser. So you can't maintain the tolerances. Again, that's why we go with this bearing design. And that's really what made the Highland Park design ever since really 1962 is when that design came out. It really became kind of the standard for, oh yeah, I want the best, it's gonna be a Highland Park carriage. Um, uh, we've got a big vice on this. The dimensions and specifications for how big of a stone this will cut is all in the description. If you go below, in uh, the video, you'll see there's a, a link to the product on our website, and that has all the speeds, feeds, sizes, things like that. I won't cover that in this particular thing. So carriage is the next thing that's really important. The third thing that really makes this a great saw is we put a big motor on this. It's got a one horsepower motor on it. It's a 100% duty cycle motor. What that means is you can run this all the time. It's not, oh, it's 75% you know, duty cycle, 50% duty cycle, and it's a dual capacitor motor. What that means is there's two, essentially a capacitor is kind of like a battery. It builds up a charge, and the dual capacitor, one's for starting the motor, giving a lot of torque to start. The other one makes the motor more energy efficient. So all our motors are dual capacitor motors because it makes sense in terms of the performance of the saw and they last longer. I'm not interested in replacing motors. I want your motor to last for years and years and years and years and years and years. Um, the other thing to look for and what we've done in the here is we've done some real nice innovations on terms of the switch box. This is a um, integrated contactor switch box. We call it a safety uh, interlock uh, contactor. And if I close the hood, you'll see that this switch has a hood switch. So when the saw is turned on, if I or somebody else more likely comes and opens the saw, the saw is going to automatically turn off. So if you are in a, um, a club and the club is in uh, state uh, or local government facilities, this is going to be a safety requirement depending on what state you're located. Uh, we sell also to a lot of departments of transportation laboratories, geology laboratories and the such. So all the kind of OSHA and CE comp uh, safety compliance issues are things that we adhere to. So this particular switch, the way it works is with my hood down, I engage my, this is my auto turn off switch here, which I'll show you on the inside right now how that works. It's simple to cut off. If I say, I want to have the saw finish cutting at that point, I put my chain to that location. And so as the power feed's moving, you can watch the power feed goes, 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 pulls the switch off and the saw turns off. If I pull the saw back and I bump this switch accidentally, the interlock keeps the saw from starting unless the hood's down, the safety switch is out, and I'm pushing the green button. So this eliminates the problem of accidentally having your saw turn on when the hood's open and getting a spray of oil over you uh, or something, somebody getting harmed. 
The other thing I wanted to point out to you is on the hoods here, you'll also see we've integrated these two little drip flanges. And basically what this does is sometimes oil gets up here when you're cutting, and if you open your hood really fast, oil can then drip down on the belt guard. This catches that oil, deflects it to the inside of the saw on both sides. We have also a, a grip clip little converter kit that you can uh, order from the website, and that will allow you to attach that to an existing saw so that you can get the advantage of put the oil back in the saw so it doesn't drip outside the saw. So the other thing we added to this particular saw is we also added, and it's standard on all our bigger saws, is the ability to mount the Everclean centrifuge on. The Everclean, which there's another video on, the, on our site that you'll see, is a centrifugal filter that mounts on this unit. Um, mounts on any of the saws. This plate just gets removed. You mount it on there and it cleans your saw while you cut. The beauty of it is you never have to clean your saw. Your saw is always clean, hence the name Everclean. Um, there's a pump that comes out here, pumps the dirt oil up to the top. The centrifuge generates 3000 g-force. The sludge, which is heavier, gets spun to the outside of the can. The clean oil comes back into the saw. So it's a continual cleaning process. So that's already ready to mount. We will be mounting an Everclean on this saw here. Um, and then the last thing we really did with the 20 inch saw, and this is true with all the saws, we've kind of kept that classic retro appearance. We love my brothers and I, brother and I were both old motorhead guys, so we drag race, build rocket cars, so we're, we like to build things. And one of the aesthetics that we really love is the aesthetics, the look and feel of things made in the 50s and the 60s. So you look at the details that we do. First, we roll this. This is a Pittsburgh joint. It's a rolled hood here. And you also know, even on the front cover, you'll never see using a stupid sticker. This is a brass nameplate. I hate stickers. I like this one. I have to put that sticker on there because it's required for import. But here we do a nice brass nameplate that gives you the serial number. And so the attention to details is one of the things we really pride ourselves on. If you ever open up any one of your saws, you're going to see one of us have signed underneath the arbor cover the signature. Uh, which is, you know, our trademark that we've looked at the saw, we've made sure it's right. Um, you know, right now as we speak, my brother's over at our factory in China. He's building lots and lots of machines. Um, and uh, we've been fortunate that, you know, from all of your support, our customer support, we've been growing like crazy. And we very much appreciate that. And we really endeavor to try to make a product that's super high quality, super durable, and not going to fall apart. Hey, thanks for watching today. If you like what you see, click the like button. Uh, subscribe if you want to get more videos like this. And down below in the description, you'll find a link that goes to our website. It goes to also what we showed you today, more information about that. And leave comments. If there's things that you like, there's things that you want us to do more on, if there's videos that you want us to shoot that we haven't shot, we're very open to that. We're really looking for ways to help you be successful in your endeavors with the tools and technologies that we create, as well as any other aspect of the hobby.